Do you want to win any of these amazing tools from Mad Hatter Glassworks? You can. Just watch the video till the end and I'll tell you how. Mad Hatter Glassworks and I are gonna be giving away one of his tools, your choice from anything he's got in the catalog. You can choose a Bunsen burner, a plate, a splitter, anything you want. But before that, I wanna show you all the tools that are available. So let's get right into that. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Dustin, I'm here with Paul from Mad Hatter Glassworks. And today we're gonna to talk about the new lineup of all these amazing products made by Mad Hatter in Reno, Nevada. If you're a longtime subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. Either way, you guys should like and subscribe to this channel. Hit that like button, it's really low effort. You just click that like button, it really helps the channel a lot. Subscribe, you never know what we're gonna be showing in the future. It could be some glass blowing stuff or tools and we wanna give it away to you. So please make sure you subscribe to this channel as well. So welcome, thank you so much for coming and I'm really excited to see the development in the last couple of years of, um, of what you've done. And when you came here, you, it was just at the beginning of, of your glass blowing and tool making journey or towards the beginning. It was. And you brought this. Well, that's where it all started. And that's that right. was two years ago. And look at all these things that you have on the table. I've been busy. It's been a ton of fun. Paul, so how did you develop so many products in such a short period of time? You have another business and a life, and so you've really made a nice impact. I see a lot of glass blowers using your, your products and saying really nice things about how well they work. And I'm, I'm so stoked to, to have you back so that you can maybe express to other people who may be being inspired by your journey. Well, it's been a it's been a tremendous journey, and I've had a ton of fun doing this and bringing these tools to the glass community. And the glass space is a it's a it's an industry that that really strikes me. The the possibilities are endless uh, as far as skills and all the things that you can do with it. And the tools are something that I've really enjoyed making for a long time. So it's fun to combine my knowledge of technology and manufacturing with the science of glass and the art. Yeah, I started, essentially, we, as you said, we started, I started with this, the 14 port manifold. Originally it was only 12, but I added a couple for in the back for Bunsen burners. Mm -hmm. So increased the flexibility of that device. And from there, I decided to add more of the gas management. Um, these things are the, these are the Y splitters. Um, they're just without the barbs. So they have the threads here. You'll be able to attach your barbs or you can attach Male adapter. males and and attach quick connects or something like that. The too. adapters are very common, and what's magic about these is that you can put you can put any of the combinations in these as opposed to the brass ones, which typically have only bees or only barbs. Yeah. This you can make whatever you have. You don't have to cut your lines. You can attach a bee and barbs out, or yeah. vice versa, in any combo that you like. Normally, we're used to seeing these all in brass, and Correct. they look more like a Y. Yeah. And this is a beautiful design, and it's going to look much more elegant on your bench, and it's going to take up less space. So then I moved into the Bunsen burners. I saw that there was a limited number of options, and I thought it would be fun and interesting to make something new. I found an unlikely source of inspiration. And I came up with the flex burner, the original, and still the best. Yeah. Uh, what makes this innovative is that the uh -huh. nozzles move. So now you can configure your fire, your heat, to different portions of your lathe work or on your bench so you can spread them out. You can keep it focused, split them up between say your punny rod and your, and your main mm -hmm. piece of work, so you can preheat one or the other. This has been very well received. It's, it's an amazing piece. Yeah, I don't want to underplay that. Like, I think people maybe started to keep you on your rate on the radar when you made this manifold, right? They're like, mm -hmm. okay, that's a, that's a company I maybe want to keep my eye on. And then when you release this one, this is the product that I've seen in everybody's studio. This right here. I've seen this all over Instagram in yeah. very well-known studios. And, and not only do I see this, in those studios but i see those glass blowers commenting on it and saying like this is this thing this is the the flex burner from mad hatter and mm -hmm. and tagging them on instagram and, and i think it's really it's not as common to see a product it's so well received and so you should really pat yourself on the back for for all the work that you did with that yeah, yeah. It, it really does me good 
this is my art. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it really does make me happy to to be a part of everybody's studio and, and be a part of that. So you sure. you've done some testing and maybe we can cut some of that into this because I know you have some video of it. Mm -hmm. um, demonstrating the evenness of the heat of this compared to other things on the marketplace. Well, besides the obvious difference of being able to, to move the nozzles and configure the heat patterns, mm -hmm. um, I also was much more compact than any of the others that are readily available today. Mm -hmm. And the other one that's, that's really quite different is on the plus models, I've got an adjustable airflow. So mm -hmm. you, can, you can adjust the air intake on that, which changes the, the, the heat characteristics of the flame mm -hmm. from a nice soft kind of carburizing flame all the way up to a full blast oxidizing hot flame. It'll get tremendously hot and it'll also go down very gentle and soft. So mm -hmm. you can tune you can tune the heat to the work. And again, in different mm -hmm. patterns and orientations. So. so basically the difference between these two for you guys uh, is that this one is tunable and you're able to adjust the, the flame and have more range in your adjustment. Mm -hmm. This one is going to produce uh, the standard flame in each one um, both of them are flexible and can both move in the same way. And they're the same height, uh, which is lower than anything else you'll find. Yep. These have magnets in the bottom, so they're magnetic. They've also got a threaded hole in the bottom, so you can attach them to a variety of brackets or some of the other products that I make and offer. Uh, it's, a, it's a common quarter 20 thread, yep. so it's readily available for all kinds of configurations. It's pretty innovative because it separates itself from other things in the industry um, because of these kind of things, the magnet, the, the threads, right? The, the idea that you can put this in different places, a angle them differently, it's really a step away and it's an innovation. And so how do you take a product that's existed for a long time and create a new product that has innovative features that separate it from something that's existed. You know, maybe that might be important for glass blowers who are making a pipe. A pipe has been made and mm -hmm. made and made and made. And made and made. Yeah. And so how does how do you think about innovation? Well, the That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration for the for the movable novel is somewhat unlikely, I think, for what this is. It came from actually from a liquid handling device uh -huh. that I worked with every day. And one day I looked at it and I thought, man, it'd be cool if that could shoot fire uh -huh. instead of water. Did a little prototyping and fooling around and, and that's what came out of it. The general philosophy that I have for trying to overcome obstacles, I'm up against a wall trying to figure something out. What I do in my head is do it upside down, inverse, backwards. And that's kind of the way that, I, that I've used for a long time to get a different perspective. If you're running it hot, run it cold. If you're trying to put it on the inside, try putting it on the outside. Mm -hmm. And that same applies to glass. And I think that's how a lot of interesting techniques and patterns have come about. You're doing something and forget what you saw or what you remember and you do it side down or you do it backwards or somehow you do it differently. Mm -hmm. And so to do it intentionally, do it inside out, do it upside down. That's, that's the way I've come up with a lot of things. It's, it's true in drawing too, I remember like if I was trying to, to draw something from another picture, if you flip it upside down, you don't look at it in the way of, oh, well, that's a tree. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to look at the shape more. And so that could definitely open up your mind to, you know, shift your perspective. Absolutely. Yeah, interesting, cool. Consider what it does rather than what it is. Mm. So after you made these two burners, what did you make next? Well, the next one was the micro burn. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of people contact say, this is really, really cool, um, but it's still kind of big for my F lane. Mm -hmm. The F lane oh, is something yeah. that, that there are a lot of them out there, a lot sure. of people, but there's nothing in, yeah. the, in, the, in the Bunsen burner world that That's would accommodate true. something, a, a lathe of that That's small really stature. True. It's very, it's -lathe. extremely compact. Yeah, but an F lathe is a beautiful lathe. lathe. It's like, it's almost like a toy car, remote control mm -hmm. car, car or something. It's like, it's like this big kind of tiny and you can make it's got a 32 millimeter bore um, the bed is about two and a half three feet long and um, you can definitely make a lot of cool stuff I've seen a lot, a lot of, of amazing pieces yeah. <laughs> bigger than bigger than you would suspect yeah. could come out of, of a machine that small yeah. yeah there's a lot of talent out there totally so so the F lathe that's definitely needed because you're right I used to have an F lathe mm -hmm. and there was no burner 
Yeah. Um, until now. Until now. <laughs> yes, sir. So the micro, it, it is adjustable, as a matter of fact. So it does have adjustable airflow. Uh, really, this is as small as I could make a Bunsen burner uh -huh. and still keep all of the functionality of the adjustability and the stable flame. Uh -huh. this, is, this also has a magnetic base to it, just like all of them. A threaded hole in the bottom so you can attach it to brackets. From that one, I, it was almost a no-brainer to take this nozzle and put right. it on that body. So sure. I've got a little bit, a little bit taller, but significantly more heat comes out of this. It's extremely versatile. You get a lot of heat out of that small package. It's really efficient, and it fits on your bench. It fits on a lathe. You can attach it to the yeah. bracketry or any of the others. It's cool. And then from there, I said, well, I went small, so now let's go big. And I made this. I call it the XL for mm -hmm. extra large, which is. Again, available with the standard or the plus nozzles. And these also move just like that. Um, so it's a larger. On the, on the big body, I went ahead and added three different input locations. So depending on how you run your gas lines onto your equipment, if you come in from the left or the right, or you want to come from the back. So you have a lot of options as far as how you configure the inputs on this larger block body. Mm -hmm. And it comes with uh, barb and it comes with the plugs so you can configure it and you don't have to shop for it. So it's ready to run, You're ready for you to plug it in when you get it. I like to use this on my, my second bench and I have a, um, it's like a graphite table with mm -hmm. holes in it and I can put this under the table and really heat up this area for working. Mm -hmm. And I can also use it on my bench just as a normal Bunsen. But what other applications have you seen people uh, use this one for? Most of them I've seen have been on the bigger lathes where mm -hmm. you're doing bigger work and covering bigger area and bigger pieces of glass where you need more heat than four nozzles. You got six. They can generate quite a bit of heat. You can also focus them in so you can put a lot of heat on a, a smaller area or spread it out but covering long pieces for say uh, back stacks mm -hmm. yeah, and pulls. Back, back. You know, big, doing big pulls like that. These are really fantastic. You will cover a lot of area. There's an attachment point on the back here, and so you could take another one of these or multiple you and can. just attach one and then attach another. Daisy and chain another, together. And mm -hmm. even on the side, so you could have two rows, you three could, rows. You could really side by start side to cover a, a big, like a hot plate, like mm -hmm. you're talking like about. Like the hot plate yeah. would be nice to have a few. The hot plate's cool, we can talk about it later in yeah. another video, but basically I can have a, the temperature of a kiln outside of a kiln. Yeah, it's a freestanding open air yeah. kiln is yeah. essentially what it becomes. Yeah, it's super handy for yeah. some really beautiful pieces for yeah. sure. So after we have the gases handled and we have the heat, so now you have your work pieces. The next thing I came up with was was the tool tray. Uh, I, you know, so something you can hang your tools in, your graphite heads, you can, you can use it as a rod rest up on your lathe, hold a, you know, your lighter or whatever you need to have, convenient and handy. So these are available in aluminum or stainless steel, depending on what you like. And we needed something to hold it, so the flex mount came about. And this is a plastic and it's a movable, it's a movable arm with a magnetic base. You can also hard mount it with a screw if you have another plate to add it to. And so this is reconfigurable in any position that you'll want to move it apart. You can break them apart and re reattach it in any kind of way that you need to. It includes hardware, so you can attach the tray to it. You can attach a flex burner to it. So we got a threaded hole, you can attach a flex burner. And these are available also. We got a little adapter plate, so you can attach either by magnet or it's all these micros and minis have a, have a threaded hole that matches up with this. Or actually even the flex burner can be an offset if you want. And those can be mounted on here, so you can hold a small one. Cool. And this is and this is included in the whole kit. So you buy this, and it includes the hardware to attach it to one or the other. Yeah, that's great, and I, that's a really needed thing because you can use this. You can attach this on your bench, mm -hmm. on the top, on the side. It's magnetic, so you can attach it on your lathe, Stick it on a wall, on a carriage. So this is super cool, and I can see a lot of uses for this. Um, holding up a Bunsen or tool tray, really innovative, and and I, I think that. If you had a Bunsen or, or maybe something that was closer to a flame, mm -hmm. you also offer something in metal. Correct, yes. These, these stand up to a lot of ambient heat, but not necessarily a direct hit from a torch. Mm -hmm. So what I've got now is I've got this Flex Mount Max is what I'm calling this, mm -hmm. which is billet aluminum. It's got the same attachment 
points of threads. This has also got a, a positive clamping, so it'll it'll hold a lot more load. Mm -hmm. So heavier tools or a bigger burner or multiple burners. So mm -hmm. this is the grown-up version of this. Yeah, it's just for something a different purpose that may be closer to a flame, Correct. need a little bit more strength, but um, definitely both are needed. This right? is super convenient yeah. and very handy. I like this beautiful design. Elegant, cool. Yeah, I can see a lot of uses and you have so much movement with this. Mm -hmm. And the easy daisy chain along as well if you need more reach and more articulation. Ah, cool. So those are available separately. So you can really, if you want one that's all metal, you can get the same height the same by height. daisy chaining these together. Yep. And that's a great thing because if you don't need this much height, you don't need to have all that extra stuff in your studio and, mm -hmm. and spend that money. Cool, really. Very durable. Really nice. Yeah, thank you. All right, you guys, I know that we said that we would talk about the swivels a little bit too. These are really cool and these are also very needed because I can just tell you so many times when I've been using those standard swivels that I'm blowing glass and after so many times of turning, they start to get stuck and sticky mm. and having a swivel that has a really nice action that's gonna sustain um, is really important. And these are beautiful. So yeah, I wanted to flesh out the product line. And one of the biggest on this is that they're very lightweight. Yeah. They're much lighter than um, the other, some of the other swivels and they're much more durable than the, yeah. the inexpensive brass ones. Picking them up, they were so light I didn't even notice. Mm. Yeah. That's the idea. <laughs> so one of the things that came up with a customer request was for some tree perk jigs. Uh -huh. And uh, so I came up with this particular item. So there were a couple of designs that I've seen uh -huh. and I wanted to combine the best features of both yeah. and eliminate some of the negatives on, on these. So what I came up with was this angled design and the, the spring. So you can quick load and you can use it in any orientation. Yeah. Well, you know, I think this is, is, is pretty cool because it really demonstrates again a very innovative and forward-thinking solution to something that was fairly simple mm -hmm. before. I don't have a, a tree brick jig of a standard one on the table, but basically what I remember them being is more of a cylinder straight across hole in the bottom with a, a wing nut uh, on it. So, so this is a much more developed product, again, like the Bunsen, where you put in thought and innovation into how to develop something. The, the spring is gonna keep the, the arms of the perk in place so that you can really have your full angle of working. Whereas the other ones, you kind of had to hold it like this, basically, and come, come from the top. Mm -hmm. This is gonna allow you um, more freedom. More freedom, and it's lighter. Yeah, and it's lighter. Yep. Uh, after that, uh, another customer request was a handle for the torch, your standard GTT torch knobs mm -hmm. that, you know, the, often these get a little sticky and they're a little rough to, to grab onto. A little inconvenient to get your hand up inside of here. So I made this quick and easy, easy handle that just clamps right over, just clamps right on top of the existing knob. Um, it includes the hardware and a wrench, so you don't have to have anything. Just slip it over, clamp it down. You can reposition the knob, the handle, so up or down. Makes it super easy and convenient to move. You can kind of if you mm -hmm. want to use it like so. If you want more, more leverage on a bigger torch, you can put this in reverse and you got more torque over here, however you want it. So this was something that somebody asked for and it turns out that it was been, it's been really popular. Has it really? Yeah, oh man, yeah, people, wow. it's something that apparently has been needed for a long time and, yeah, and now we got it. There hasn't been something like that that I've seen. That's pretty and yet, cool. And yet is needed everywhere. So yeah. that's where I'm, that's the, that's my objective is to bring simple, yeah. simple solutions to, to everyday problems. Cool, that should be yeah. interesting. I think a lot of people would enjoy that and it's um, fairly inexpensive and uh, cool. And it works well. Yeah. yeah. You're keeping it fresh with a lot of new stuff and one thing that I was really excited to see was a collaboration with Hick Dog. Mm -hmm. um, super great glass blower, you guys. Um, He's a really good Maybe guy. we can cut a piece of him or his work up, but mm -hmm. very talented guy and I, w I was excited for this product. It was actually something that I knew I needed. I'm really happy to see it in the marketplace and I can't wait to use it on my bench. So tell us what you have here. So this is a collaboration between me and Hick Dog. Uh, like you said, he, he's a really, he's a great guy. So he had built some of these uh, in his garage and they proved to be popular with, with a lot of glass blowers, but he's not a manufacturer. So he approached me and said, hey, I've got a, I've got a product that I want to sell more of, but I 
don't want to build it. So would you be interested in building it? And so we did some talk and uh, came to an agreement on how we wanted to pursue this product. And essentially I took his design and we're bringing this to the market. So it's an electronic solenoid mm -hmm. Bunsen control pedal. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an on off switch that is conveniently located down a, typically a device on the floor mm -hmm. so you can use it on your, with your foot. And you got gas in and you got gas out. I've got uh, the same NPT connection port so you can, again, barb or B and turn it on and with your foot you can turn your Bunsen on or off. Mm -hmm. you'll, need a, you'll need a spark, yeah. uh, but this controls the gas flow the on or off. <laughs> so what this is, is this is a, a foot pedal for your Bunsen burner. It's an on off switch with a solenoid for your Bunsen burner. So mm -hmm. some of you guys are familiar with that for uh, your bench burners. Um, and so the wonderful thing about this is that you can set your Bunsen just like you can your torch and you can click it on and off either with, with your hand on your bench or on the ground. And that's going to turn your Bunsen on to your previous setting. So you can leave your knob open mm -hmm. when you're working. Obviously, when you go home, you're going to shut everything down. But when you're working, you just click the button. You have your, your sparker or your flame over your Bunsen. It's going to turn it on. When you're done working, or maybe you put the piece in the kiln, you just turn it off. And when you bring your piece back out of the kiln, you can turn it back on in its set position. This is gonna be really nice for lathe work and for bench work anywhere that you have a Bunsen. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be handy. And it's another device that I think, uh, it's brand new to the marketplace, brand so new. we don't really know, but I think there's gonna be other people like myself and Hick Dog and all of Hick Dog's clients mm -hmm. who uh, who think this is a, a needed product. So um, basically, this is a, a specialized foot pedal for your Bunsen. It's a single single channel foot pedal. That's it. Yeah. One thing that's really neat about your product line is that you have a lot of different colors because of the an anodized uh, aluminum. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's also kind of new in the marketplace is having some color choice so that you can make your studio the way you want. The way you I want. found that artists yeah. really love to have, they, they love to work in beautiful spaces and yeah. they love to have beautiful tools. I love color. Mm -hmm. I love beautiful things. And so I wanted to bring these products and give people the option besides just black or silver. Yeah. Color is wonderful and people really enjoy it. So standard offerings are black, red, purple, blue, and green. Mm -hmm. And I have a number of parts in stainless steel and powder coat as well. You've got a lot of stuff that you've accomplished in the last couple of years, really innovative products and um, adaptations of existing products that have been improved. Yeah. What's the future hold? What do you, I mean, I know, like, I'll tell you guys, I mean, <laughs> Over your ears, I just saw some prototypes and several of them were very special and um, I can't wait to share with you guys. I'll share them as soon as I can. I will also want to mention too, if you guys want to buy some of this stuff, we can get you a little bit of a discount. So if you're going to buy something, uh, just put in Revere. Revere is the promo code yep. and uh, you will get 5% off that's it. of the Correct. product line. Absolutely. And um, that's a big deal. Um, every every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice of you to, to share that with, I with the viewers. It. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So make sure you go to the go to the website and use that promo code just to save a few bucks. But how are you keeping developed? Tell me about your development process. How are you getting the ideas? You know, are you What's going on? A lot of ideas come from uh, come from artists and customers. They'll approach with, uh, you know, I'm trying to do this or I need one of these. And uh, if it sounds like it's something that, that is going to be well received in the industry, I'm looking to I'm looking to solve some problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, some interesting ideas have come through. Yeah, you're really open to hearing people who, with experience and what they're doing in their process, where they might need something. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can reach out by email to Matt Hatter and definitely I think that's a good idea. If you have an idea that you think that there's a product needed and maybe you don't have uh, the electronics experience or the machining experience to do so, try to make it happen. Try yeah. to bring it into reality. Reach out and yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do to make it happen. Absolutely. I've got a couple a couple cool collabs in the works right now that are going to be yeah. real fun and well received. I think you guys are going to really like it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, if you guys uh, are at a trade show and uh, Paul is often there uh, yeah. with his products. Uh, make sure you say hi to him. Make sure you say that uh, you saw him in, in the video and he'll give you uh, the review discount as well. well. Something, something. Yep. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you and meet you. It's a lot of fun to meet a new artist and everybody. So yeah, please come say hi. 
it'll be great. Now, I want you to comment in the video. If you stay till the end, you're amazing. Let us know what you're doing, how you fell in love with glass, what tools you want to see in the industry, uh, you know, what you had for breakfast, who knows? Yeah. So my contact information is Dustin at revereglass.com. Welcome to send me an email. And um, madhatterglassworks at gmail.com, madhattergw.com. We'll put all the contact information down in the description. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Paul, for coming again. Um, really cool to see all the innovation. Thank you, Dustin. It's always a pleasure to see you. I appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon. Cool. All right, you guys, comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you soon. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you how to win something. And I got a surprise. There's gonna be more than one winner. There's gonna be one winner who's gonna to get to decide anything from the catalog, and then a few people who I'm gonna send some stuff to personally. So make sure you guys follow the directions because I wanna send you something. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and like and comment, and give the video a share, and we'd love to give you something in the catalog.